the district about $100 million to build. It's a beautiful facility. But it's in a community called Deanwood, which not only is a very interesting historical community, but it's kind of one of the east of the river communities that most represents how the, the, those communities east of the river have been uh, disenfranchised and under-resourced. Deanwood uh, was one of the first places in the city where freed slaves could actually own homes and buy land. They broke up the land from an old plantation there owned by the, the sheriff family. And so it became, generation after generation, really a suburban community in Washington, D.C. Interestingly enough, it also was a place where entrepreneurialism in the African-American community really took root. In the, in the turn of the century, Nanny Helen Burroughs built the National Girls and Women's Training School, which was a place that trained young African-American women in getting jobs in the domestic uh, industries uh, and was very radical for its time. She was also a union activist. Um, later on in the 1920s, the engineer and architect H.D. Uh, Woodson built what was called Suburban Gardens Amusement Park, which was the first and only amusement park that D.C. has ever seen. And not only did this amusement park provide the African-American community with a place of their own uh, where they could have recreational uh, uh, lives, but it became a huge success in Washington, D.C. and drew people from all over the region. Sadly, uh, after the war began, <coughs> Suburban Gardens was torn down. Um, but it was a community that displayed tremendous entrepreneurial vigor. After that, there was very, very little investment. Today, Deanwood has no pharmacy, no bank, no fresh food market. But you can still see much of the architecture that was designed by H.D. Woodson at the time. Our notion in, in having the, the renewable energy tech show there was because we felt that when the students that graduate with science, uh, um, technology, engineering, and math skills leave Woodson High School and go on to get advanced degrees in universities, if they come back to D.C., what kind of jobs are they going to find? And so our feeling was that this was the, uh, the best place where we could demonstrate the need for building uh, a, a, dis a distributed generation-based grid that would create jobs into the future and power our, our, the nation's capital throughout the 21st century. So we felt that doing something like this would illustrate how H.D. Woodson High School could really break ground. So we, for the, for the event, we built a solar-powered Wi-Fi network that worked on the school grounds, and we agreed with the school um, uh, administration that the project that we wanted to look at was developing a solar-powered Wi-Fi network for the whole Deanwood community so the students would have 24-7 access uh, to Internet and use a battery storage backup so that it would, it would be on all of the time in the community. And the school was very excited about this. We worked with, with this, some of the classes a little bit, and we do hope to pursue this. Interestingly enough, <laughs> After, the, after the, uh, the solar flare was over, about two weeks later, the derecho hit. And the Deanwood community, which is one of the least planned communities that we have, was one of the places that, was, that had the power out longest. Most parts of it were out until Friday, after, you know, a week after the derecho first hit on the, on the 29th. Um, interestingly enough, uh, my wife has a brother that's in a, a rehabilitation facility in Deanwood, and she went to visit him several days after the derecho, and what she saw when she got there was a huge metro bus that was backed up to the entrance of the facility, and dozens of people in wheelchairs in 100 degree heat, and these, these are people, many of them have lost arms and legs, they're very, very sick, the wheelchairs were stacked up at the back of the bus, and all of these people were waiting to get their wheelchair onto the bus so that they could get a few minutes of air conditioning. So I think one of the things that this demonstrates is that not only do we need to build a grid like that, but we need to be very concerned about the condition of the grid now because a few more outages like this and people in situations like that where the backup generators fail are really going to be in life and death situations. So it's, it's much more serious than we imagine, but the fact of the matter is 
that it hit, hit home to me that the concept of building this type of a grid was even more important than we had originally thought. Several days later, um, I spoke to Jigger and found out that he was pushing the idea about how, in fact, to build this grid. And so we've been working together uh, to try to, to push the idea around because not only is DC concerned about this, but Montgomery County and Prince George's County are also equally concerned. In fact, Montgomery County has been hit harder and more often than even east of the river DC has. So without 